Hello, this is Mr. Stansberry. I'm going to go over the notes for 2H, which is accuracy of measurements. Okay, so uh, at the end of this, you should be able to determine the range of accuracy of given measurements. Okay. So basically, what you have to know is that um, a measurement is only as accurate to plus or minus half the smallest. Uh, division on the scale. Okay, and let me explain what that means. All right. For example, if some, if you had you received a measurement that said something was 37 feet long, the the smallest division of the scale. This is only to really to the nearest foot. So the accuracy of the measurement would be assumed that it should be within. Um, a half of a foot of 37 feet. Right? So meaning you would take 37 and you'd add a half and you'd also take actually let's start with subtracting a half. 37 and you'd subtract a half and it would be 237 plus a half. Okay, so that would mean that this should be accurate. If you were given 37 feet, it should be accurate to 36.5 feet to 37.5 feet. Okay, so that would be the assumed accuracy so that if you're going to go through and, and measure it exactly, it should be between 36.5 and, and 37.5 and feet because they rounded to the nearest foot. Um, another example of that would be, let's say you were given a measurement of 37 feet 4 inches. Okay, so now f inches is now the smallest division on the scale. So you would now expect that to be within, call it plus or minus, one half of an inch of that measurement. So what you do is you would take 37 feet, 4 inches, and you'd subtract a half an inch. And also you'd take 37 feet, 4 inches, and you'd add a half of an inch. Okay, so that would mean that our, that our range on this would be 37 feet, 3.5 inches, to... 37 feet 4.5 inches and that would be the accurate um, range of those measurements all right so let's take a look at example 22 from page 59 all right So this example says, find the range of values for, the, for a measurement of 18.7 centimeters. All right, so the smallest piece of the scale there is the tenths of a centimeter. So we would take half of a tenth, which would really just be five hundredths, right? So what you would do is you would take 18.7 centimeters and you would add not a half of a centimeter but we've got our 18.7 so that's again that's seven tenths so we would do half of a half of the tenth that's that's butchered so really what we're going to do here is we're going to add 0 0.05 and again, instead of adding, let's subtract first. And then we'll take 18.7. And then we'll add 0 0.05. So you get 18.65 centimeters 
to 18.75 centimeters. That would be our accurate range there that would that it would give us. Okay. Um, let's take a look at one last example. It'll be example 23 from page 59. Okay, so this example says a rectangular block of wood was measured at 78 centimeters by 24 centimeters. What are the boundary limits of the perimeter? So, really what we have to do is, again, use our accuracy of measurement to figure out what the, what the actual dimensions could possibly be. So, here's our little rectangular piece of wood. So again, we know that we're at 78 by 24, right? But again, that could mean anywhere down to, again, it's to the nearest centimeter. So we'd have to take half of that last centimeter off. So it would really be 78 minus a half. And then also we could take our 78 plus a half for that to give us 77.5 to 78.5 for the um, length here and then the width would be the same thing we just take 24 minus 0 0.5 to 24 plus 0 0.5 which would give us a 23.5 to 24.5 right so then these two measurements here, the 77.5 and the 23.5, would make the smallest possible perimeter. And the 78.5 and the 24.5 would make the largest possible perimeter. Okay, so let's just maybe redraw that with the smallest one. So that's 77.5 by 23.5. So that's for the smallest perimeter. So basically we would just add 77.5 to find the perimeter, add 77.5 to 23.5, and then we can double that, right? So let's calculate that out. So we get 77.5 plus 23.5 and we double that so the perimeter of this is 202 centimeters and that's for the smallest possibility now to get the largest possible perimeter we would now have our 78.5 by 24.5. So then we do the same thing two times. 78.5 plus 24.5. And we can calculate that out. 78.5 times 24.5. Oops. Well, not times, but plus. So let's go back here and turn that multiplication into plus under 3. And then we end up multiplying that by 2. And we get that our new range is 206 centimeters. So our answer would be anywhere from 202 centimeters to 206 centimeters would be our the boundary limits of the perimeter. All right. I know I said this was the last example, but it would probably be really good for us to take a look at example uh, 25 on page 60 also. So let's take one, one quick look at the last one. Alright, so this one says a rectangular box is measured as 10 centimeters by 6 centimeters by 12 centimeters. What are the boundary levels of its actual volume? So, 
um, again it's to the near all these are to the nearest centimeters so really the smallest one without drawing a picture of it would be we'd have to take our 10 centimeters minus a half a centimeter let's see by which would give us 9.5 centimeters and then we take our 6 centimeters minus 0 0.5 centimeters which gives us 5.5 centimeters and we take our um, 12 centimeters and subtract a half a centimeter and we get 11.5 centimeters so that's the smallest it could possibly be is 9.5 by 5.5 by 11.5 right so let's multiply that out to figure out what we get so we get 9.5 because that's volume right length times width times height 9.5 times 5.5 times 11.5 and that gives us 600.875 centimeters cubed because we're talking about volume okay so that's the smallest possible one let's then take a look at the largest which would be 10 centimeters plus a half a centimeter which is 10.5 by 6 centimeters plus a half a centimeter which is 6.5 centimeters by 12 centimeters plus 0 0.5 centimeters which gives us 12.5 centimeters so now calculating all that out we would get 10.5 times 6.5 times 12.5 and we get 853.125 so then our boundary levels of its actual volume would be 600.875 cubic centimeters to 853.125 cubic centimeters so that's a pretty big range if you think about it from 600 to 850 so anyway um, that's all there is for that. If you have questions, feel free to ask. Thanks.